In this tutorial, we'll cover the details of how to change the text and graphics on a PDF dynamic stamp. When you are looking for a particular PDF stamp, you often find one that is very close but maybe doesn't look quite the way you need it. So, there are a couple of different ways that we can reuse dynamic stamps that we found in the wild for our own stamps. One way is to copy the form fields from the found stamp into our own custom design. This particular method works great if all the functionality is contained in the form fields, meaning it's simple functionality, or you're copying functionality from multiple stamps into your own stamp. Either way, if you use this technique, you'll have to make modifications to the code, if for no other reason, because the stamp name will be different. Stamp names have to be unique, and they have to match the script. You may also have to make other modifications to get all the scripts to work together. This is a more advanced technique. However, if the stamp functionality is really close to what you want, then it's much simpler to just change the graphics and the text on the stamp that you found. In this case, no scripting changes are necessary because you're not changing the functionality of the stamp. This is the technique that we'll be discussing here. So let's do some review on how stamps are put together so we can understand how all this works. A stamp file is a regular PDF file that we can edit just like any other PDF. Each of the actual stamps that are in that file is a page in the PDF, but not just any pages. Only pages that have been turned into page templates can be used as stamps. It's not important if you're not familiar with page templates. For now, we only need to know that a stamp page has this special feature that we don't want to screw up. The last thing is that the dynamic part of a dynamic stamp is a form field, because form fields can be changed dynamically, of course. So now that we know a little bit about how a stamp file is put together, let's take a closer look at how a PDF is put together. A PDF page has two layers, or maybe a better way to say it is that a page has two parts. It has the static background, that's all the graphics and text that's on the page, and then there are all the form fields and markup annotations that float over top of the graphics. We can literally take all that static text and graphics, pull it out of the PDF page, and replace it with a new set of static text and graphics. It's that simple. We just swap out the background of the PDF page, leaving in place all the fields, scripts, and most importantly, the page template. All we changed was how the page looked, not what the page does. To do this in Acrobat, we use the Replace Page tool, which only replaces static content and leaves the page template status in place as well as all of the fields and annotations. It only changes the static content of the page. Here's the complete process for how we change the background of the page. The first part, of course, is to create a new graphic. The graphic doesn't have to be the same size as the old graphic. It can be smaller, it can be larger. The only thing that's important is that it has enough space on it to accommodate the fields. I like to use Microsoft Word for creating the graphics because it's easy, most people know how to use it, and it's available on most systems, as opposed to some better design tools such as InDesign and Illustrator, which are also great tools for creating stamp graphics, but they require some expert knowledge. The second step is to convert this into a PDF, of course, because we're replacing PDF pages. And part of that is cropping the page to the size of the stamp graphic that we've created. We'll see that when we do the example later on. The third step is to replace the stamp page with the new page using the Replace Page functionality. And number four is to modify the field sizes and positions on the new graphics. Because, of course, once we replace the pages, the fields will be in their old locations and we'll want to change that around to accommodate the new graphics that we've created. So, let's do a sample. One of our most popular stamp downloads is the exhibit stamp. This is for marking exhibits in a legal case. To use it, I simply go to the stamps menu and select the auto incrementing exhibit stamp and just apply it. However, this stamp is more complicated than just a simple dynamic stamp. It comes with an automation script for setting up the stamp parameters. So let's change the increment number 
and the case number 2777. Just something easy to remember. And now, when we apply the stamp, you'll see those new numbers are applied. And the next time I apply the stamp, the exhibit number is incremented. This is an auto-incrementing stamp that comes with an external script for controlling some of the parameters. It's not simple, but the biggest comment we get about this stamp is that the colors and the style don't match what's needed for the courts in their jurisdiction. So what do you do? Well, all we need to do is create a new design and swap out the background. To do this, the first thing we'll do is go to the actual stamp file, which you can see here, and scroll down to the actual stamps. Now everything on top here are instructions for how to use the stamp and how to install it. The actual stamps are these two last pages. I'll change the view so that we can look at them as a single page and then display the ruler so we get an idea of how big the stamp actually is. It's a little over two inches wide and a, about an inch and three sixteenths high. The new stamp that we want to create will make a little bit wider with some new colors. I'll create the new design in Word. I'll start by adding a new shape. So let's say this is the shape that we want for the stamp. We'll make it say two and a half inches wide and a little less than an inch high. I'll leave the background as is and I'll add in an outline and some text. Now I'll add a new page and then copy the design to the new page. Now this item is of course for the plaintiff and we'll want a different background color. Now we have two stamp designs that are similar but different and have locations for the form fields. Let's convert it to a PDF and then open it in Acrobat. You can see that it's a full page size, so we'll crop it down. There, we have the graphics that we need for our new stamp. Now let's switch back to the exhibit stamp and replace our pages. The command is right here on the Organized Pages toolbar. And we're going to be replacing two pages, pages six and pages 7, which are the defendant and plaintiff stamps. And there are our old stamps replaced with the two new graphics. But we're not done yet because the form fields have to be modified. Let's change the view back to single page because that allows us to see where those form fields got to when we made the change. The form fields are actually off page and the only way to have seen that was to change the view to single page, non-scrolling. Let me zoom in a little bit and move those fields back onto the form. We're going to have to resize them and also change. We'll change the color, we'll make the size a little larger for the case number because it's larger. Left align it and the exhibit number is smaller. There, we're done. All we have to do now is save the file, then we'll close Acrobat, copy the file to the correct location, then reopen Acrobat, and now let's take a look at that original file that we stamped with the previous graphic. We'll just jump right in, and right away you can see that the graphic changed on the stamp menu, and there it is. It's got a little bit different of a shape, color, and the text is slightly different, but the scripts all work exactly the same way. And that's all there is to it.